boy here we go so today it is all about solving systems of equations by substitution so our learning targets will be able to solve a system of equations algebraically using that substitution method we'll learn a different method next class and also be able to write a system of equations for real life situations as always my goal is to show you where you could be using this in the real world and it's not just about doing um, ridiculous problems all the time. So our vocabulary for today is substitution. It's exactly what it sounds like in the real world if you were to kind of use this in your everyday language to replace a variable or a number with it, sorry, with a place that were variable with a number or an expression. So a lot of times we've seen it where we take a variable and we replace it with a number, we put a number in, plug it in, plug it in, they say, or now we'll be using an expression, which is a number variable and maybe a add or subtraction, a little combination of the such that goes in for a variable. So what we're doing today is we're gonna try to solve equations two equations that is, and we have been able to solve a single equation with one variable. We've been doing that a lot. And it's impossible to solve a single equation that has two different variables, like a y and an x that we've seen. No way to figure out what y is or what x is when there's two variables in one equation. But when we have those two variables and two equations, we will be able to use one equation against the other one in order to figure out the value of both variables. So that's what we're going to see done today. And to get things started here, I got this little representation of how we're going to look at this. So let's think of $10. Now, $10 can come in the form of a $10 bill. It can also come in the form of a $5 bill and five singles. So this equation is totally true because a $10 bill, one single bill, is equal to a $5 bill and five singles, right? Now we could have also done a $10 bill with a $5 and a $5 bill. So my point is there's more than one way to write these amounts, okay? So think of it in terms of it's the same value, it's just a different way to see it. And I'm going to be going back to this slide uh, throughout today's presentation. So let's get into the first mathematical example where we have two equations, one being y equals 2x plus 5 and the other one being y equals negative 3x minus 10. Now I'm going to use some smart board magic today because I still don't have my new screen in, but I've got some old tricks up my sleeve that I've been using for a while and hopefully that'll help us understand how to solve these with substitution. So I've got this equation y equals 2x plus 5 and what I want you to think about is that this right here is the same as this right here and again my example is if this is a $10 bill just one then let this be a $5 bill plus five singles so even though it looks different which this looks a lot different than this it means the same thing so what can i do with this well i have a second equation with y in it so i'm going to take what i know y to be here and use it oh boy and use it right here to make an equation that has just one variable now you're not going to have smart board magic uh, when you do your homework so i'm just going to do the old trick where i circle this and i say that you know what that's the same as saying y. And now I rewrite an equation that looks like this. Now what's the big deal about that? This is an equation that you've solved many times before. It has the same variable, x, on both sides. And now you can use your equation steps to solve for x. So what I'm going to do first is add 3 to both sides. And I'll end up with 5x plus 5 equaling negative 10. I'm then going to solve by subtracting 5 on both sides. And get negative 15. I'm one step away from getting x by itself. And voila, x was negative 3. Now, I couldn't have solved for x in either one of these when I first looked at them, but now that I have them um, 
you know, using them against each other, I was able to find x. Now, once I find x, it's very important that I go back and I find y. Now, I can use either one of these uh, equations. Always try to use the one that seems the easiest to work with, which is, in my opinion, y equals 2x plus 5. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do substitution again. And when you see this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, we've done this before, where we take a number, regular old negative 3, and we put it in for x, because that's what we solved x to be. We know in this case, x is negative 3. So I go ahead, I substitute, and then I follow the order of operations where I multiply first, then I would add, but I don't add here because the signs are different, so I end up with y being negative 1. Now, we are solving linear equations, so guess what? This is actually a point on a graph, so I'm going to write it as negative 3 and negative 1, and then eventually go back to that and show you how um, this is related to graphing, okay? All right, so for the next one, I got some more color-coded fun, and we're going to try to substitute to create one equation. Right now, I have two equations that have two different variables. Each one of these can't be solved on their own. So I take what I know y to be. This is the same thing as y. It doesn't look the same. Again, a $10 bill versus uh, two $5 bills, however you want to think of it. But it's still $10. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in for this y down here and say that these um, are the same so I can create an equation that has just one variable. Now, you don't have smart board magic when you're doing this at home, so I'm just going to show you what most students are familiar with or comfortable with. They circle this, they know that it's y, and they draw a little arrow to where they're going to place it. So this becomes, and let me color code appropriately 4x plus and then we take that 2x plus 3 that we know is the same as y substitute it in and we create an equation with just one variable and then after that you've done this a hundred times before so please if you have any questions about the substitution um, now is the time to ask but we're going to add like terms together right we got 2x and 4x that makes 6x plus 3 equals 9, and then it just becomes the property of equality where I do it to both sides, and as long as I'm doing opposite operations, I am good. So this will end up being x equaling 1. Now, so you said to go with the top equation because that one looks easier to work with. So y equals 2x plus 3. We then want to take our value of x, which we found to be 1, and substitute or plug it in plug it in as we you know would wrongly say and end up with two times one plus three make sure you multiply first then add together and you will end up with a y value of five and again this is a point on the graph which we'll talk about in a little bit where we could say one comma five is the solution or answer to this problem Let's keep it going because I don't see any questions with the next one. So this one is the third different kind of variety. And uh, the big one with this, the big thing with this one is you need to think about what can be substituted in. So if I know that y is the same as this expression, I can use this expression in the top. Now where? How about for this right here, right, this y? Because that would create an equation with just one variable. Again, I cannot solve this if it has x and y, but I could solve it if I had just x, or just y for that matter. So I'm going to write the 4x minus 2, the part that's in black, and then I'm going to write the negative 5x plus 13. Now there's one thing that we're going to have to remember to do, and we've done this before, we've talked about it, and that is how can we show negative 2 times 5x plus 13? How can I multiply everything in blue? This is the part of class where normally people raise their hand. Unfortunately, that can't happen here, but I know some of you know it. You want to put that in parentheses. Putting that in parentheses will allow us to multiply by distributing. And we would want to distribute because we cannot add or subtract unlike terms. So that's out. So let's rewrite this as 4x, a negative times a negative, 
positive 10x and a negative times 13. Make sure you do it to all terms in the parentheses, negative 26, equaling 16. So there you go. First step done. Again, whenever we have like terms on the same side, put those together. 14x minus 26 equals 16. And we continue this process by adding 26 on both sides. 14x is equal to something like 42, which is divided nicely. 42 divided by 14 is good old-fashioned 3. And just as I put the marker down, we're not quite done, because we've got to go back and find y. Once you find one variable, it's important that you find the other. So which one would be easiest? Giving a quick glance, I'd say the bottom one this time, right? y equaling negative 5x plus 13 would be the easiest way to find y. And why is that? Because I know x. All right, I know that x is 3, so I'm going to substitute that in for x. And then just perform normal arithmetic where I multiply and get negative 15. Then I'm going to subtract. I know you're looking at this and saying add, but the signs are different. And I would end up with negative 2. So this would give me an answer of 3 comma negative 2. Again, a point on the graph. So if we're going to graph this system of equations, we need to make sure we have slope intercept form. We've talked about it. We did it before break, but just in case you forgot, remember that these have to be solved for y. So this first one, we're going to have to move the 2x from one side of the equal sign to the other because that's going to zero out and give us y by itself. We now have a slope because that's always in front of x. We could put it over 1 if we wanted to, and then our y-intercept. Feeling like labeling? Excellent. There's your m, there's your b. Remember, unlike terms cannot be added or subtracted. That's why I didn't put that together. So let's start at 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with our first point, and let's go down 2 and 1. Now I'm going to want a point plot that is a lot of these points because I'm going to look for where they intercept. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of them down correctly. I then I'm going to come through and connect, extend, and arrows and label. So the label is the name of 2x plus y equals 9. Always want to use the original. Now it's time for the other one, which is already in slope intercept form, which we're excited about because we don't have to do anything to it. Maybe you'd want to throw a one out there and maybe you'd want to put that over one so you knew the slope and you knew the y-intercept before graphing. So I'm going to start at negative three on the y-axis, again, the y-intercept, and then I'm going to rise one and run one. Now this is positive slope, so what's going up as it goes to the right, there it is, it makes a pass through the green line, and that's going to be important to us because that is the answer. And what do I mean by that? Well, this right here, four negative, or sorry, four positive one, is the solution, although other name for an answer. It's also known as the point of intersection. Okay. So that's going to be important to us. Why? Well, guess what we're going to get when we solve this by that substitution method. I'm going to come back up here and kind of clear out what we've got and show you that if I've got two equations and I've got two variables, I need to create one equation with the same variable. And the best way to do that is to take that x minus 3 and substitute it in for y. So hey, you need change? You gotta go to the vending machine after school and pick something up before practice? Mr. Petrie, do you have change for a 10? Yes, I do. I've got two fives, or I've got one five and three singles. But either way, it's the same amount of money. And we're just gonna use that in here in place of y, so that I can now solve for x, because when I've got the same variable, I can add these up for 3x minus 3 equaling 9. I then go through my normal solving steps of adding 3 to both sides. If I'm going too fast, please let me know, but at this stage in the game, I'm hoping that this is pretty easy. 
I get x equaling 4. I then hit, get to choose the equation I want to substitute back in. I'm going with y equals x minus 3 because it looks the easiest. 4 minus 3 because I put the 4 in for x and y is equal to 1. And guess what? That's the same answer I saw when it was graphed.